Hi guys and welcome back and today we'll get on with building the F4U or Corsair. Now this has come about after I built the little Spitfire. I opened it up to all of the subscribers and people who are watching to vote on their favourite fighter planes and much to my surprise this was the most highly voted for plane. I didn't really know much about this plane and uh, in doing a little bit of research discovered that it was an absolute ripper and I had an enormous kill ratio against the Japanese fighters. I think it was like 11 to 1, so a great little plane and fun to build. Now, if you can all just humour me for 40 seconds, I'm running a competition from April in support of my wife's business, so there'll be a little ad for JJ's Celebration Hampers. If you've got family or friends, or in particular right now your mother living in Australia, and you want to send her a massively awesome gift hamper, then follow through to the website to have a look at what's available. Anyone who uses the code to purchase a hamper will go in the draw for this Panther G Smart Kit by Dragon, and that will be um, done early in the following month. Make Mummy's Day Day. Visit jjcelebrationhabitus.com Free delivery anywhere in Australia 10% off with the code Paladin Don't make mum angry Right, so let's get on with it This is the Hobby Boss 170 second scale Corsair And let's open the box and have a look at the plastic It comes very well packed But I immediately became a little bit disconcerted By the fact that the fuselage was in one piece The wings were in one piece And I decided to build this because I just wanted to have a, a return to putting a kit together and I quickly realized that there wasn't a lot of putting together involved in this. So I have to confess to you all that I started somewhat underwhelmed and realized and I looked at the box and it's a real basic beginner's kit. So uh, look, the plastic is nice, the detail is fine and clearly the instructions are pretty straightforward and simple. But I was disappointed in as much as I was looking forward to putting some plastic together and, and this wasn't going to satisfy that need. So just putting the top half with the bottom half together, basically. It um, feels quite chunky, so it's quite solid. It um, stood up to a little bit of my fat sausage fingers, dropping it once or twice uh, from, the, from a reasonable height onto the bench. But otherwise, it went together like all kits do. The fit was reasonably good. Just had to do a little bit of extra work on joining the top and the bottom half together. And uh, you'll see a little bit later on a couple of gaps uh, around where the wing roots are. But nothing horrendous. If you've watched my channel before, you guys know I am not an aircraft builder. So it's all a bit of a mystery to me. And I just watch in awe at some of the guys who are you know, doing just amazing work on planes and, you know, rescribing panel lines and just making them look fantastic. I am not, I am a armour builder applying armour builder skills to aircraft and uh, you don't get those beautiful results with that skill set, but it's still, I think, look, it came out pretty good and the plastic, as I went through, didn't require a huge amount of cleanup. So there was no horrendous flash or anything like that. Just the uh, sprue goats needed a little bit of work, but by and large, pretty well put together. So on with the painting and started with just an undercoat of the Vallejo Black Primer. Mainly because I don't have the right colour blue, so I needed uh, a dark starting point. So that the blue that I did have was closer to where it needed to be. And once that had dried, then I hit it up with the AK Metallic Aluminium from their third gen formulation. And that sprays on interestingly. It tends to, well, I found it tended to dry on the needle fairly regularly, so it was a little frustrating. But anyway, we got there in the finish, and I thought that gave it a good basis for um, what would be some subsequent weathering uh, and scratching to reveal some of the metal underneath. 
and then on with the blue and you'll notice I didn't put the metal on the under carriage of the plane because I just wanted it to be darker hopefully so the blue I used was again the AK acrylics third gen formula and that's dark Prussian blue but nowhere near as dark as it looks in the bottle and obviously on top of the aluminium coating it came up much paler than I thought but I'd always suspected I was going to have to do a couple of coats and I always suspected I was going to have to mix some black in with some blue to get closer to the right tone so wasn't devastated by how that turned out. So just doing a little bit of chipping at this stage and that's just with a, an old brush and some water and just sort of poking and prodding away gently but persistently just to get some wear and tear in where I suspect the traffic areas might be but again it's just a bit random from my perspective because I'm not a really experienced aircraft modeler but uh, I was happy with the results and I started to get some unexpected benefits of putting on the lighter blue coat over the silver and had some nice transitions where the wear was starting to show through so a, a happy accident I'd have to confess but uh, I thought they looked pretty good and you have that slightly lighter blue around where the metal's been exposed. You also see there my poor attempt at simulating a cockpit from just a plain piece of uh, plastic. So now just a gloss coat to protect that weathering or chipping work that I've just finished. So starting to do some of the little detailed painting now for the rockets and other bits and pieces around the plane. And to get the tips the consistent size, I just drilled a hole in a piece of clear plastic. It didn't have to be clear, but it was just what I had to hand. So I could put it in and screw it around, and that gave me a, a line, which I then scraped off the green paint from very carefully with the tip of the X-Acto, and then came back in with the aluminium, or for American viewers, aluminum. So after a little bit of careful masking, doing some of the detail work around the nose of the plane, the engine, and this is purely my made-up colour scheme. I just thought it would look good with the black and then the white right at the very tip. So for all those who actually know what they're talking about, be kind to me. This is purely for aesthetic purposes more than anything else. I'm not trying to replicate a specific plane or even a general category of plane. Back in then to get a little bit of metal into that into those areas where I'd scraped up the top layers of the paint but I was trying very carefully not to obliterate the light blue edges so I think that worked out pretty well in the finish. On to the decals now, and you'll notice I'm cutting that sort of wedge shape out, and that's just removing the decal numbers. I just find if I don't do that and I chuck the whole slab in, then they start to float around and get attached to the decals that I want, and I just get annoyed. So it's just easier for me to get rid of them before I stick stuff in the water. So the rest is fairly obvious. I will come back a bit later. So once the gloss coat had dried, came back in with an acrylic black wash, so just some Vallejo black with water, and coated the whole plane with it. And then with a wet cotton bud, or Q-tip, came back in when that was dried, just to take off the surface areas and clean up over the decals a little bit and generally reduce the overall effect on the prominent areas. And then with an oil wash, so some burnt umber oil paint and mineral spirits, came in with a brown wash, just to dirty things up a little bit. And this is where you can really tell that I'm an armour modeler because I just splash it on like it's a tank. Not necessarily proud of that, but it uh, came up with an end result that I liked. And then I just used the airbrush to blow it off backwards, so it got those theoretically streaking marks that it should have got if it was flying through the air. So in the home straight now, just using the soft pastels, some black mainly for simulating the engine or the exhaust um, stains, and also did a bit of that around the gun ports and 
you know, again, there's no right or wrong with this. There's no formula for correct dusting. I whack it on and then blow it off with the airbrush and then I whack on some more again until it sort of starts to look like it's uh, what I want it to look like. Uh, not a science, definitely an art. That's why they're called artists' pastels. And then I realised I hadn't done something that I should have done in the building stage, which was to do the uh, wiring from the back of the plane and looked at some pictures and the connection sort of looked a little bit like that and the rigging seemed to vary sometimes it went from just from the rudder to the rear post sometimes it went to both sometimes it just went to the front post sometimes it went to a a, a nobule nobule a nobule thing just onto the side of that and it started to make my head hurt so i thought i'll just go for what i think looks nice and that was a combination of front and back post in the finish and a little bit fiddly, and I wish I'd done it at the start because I had to go back in and do a lot of repair work for where the super glue uh, was very, very obvious, and uh, the hassle of painting it again without destroying anything else. Basically, uh, I was slack and I should have done it earlier. And so that's it. So here it is just sitting on a bit of a temporary display base. I'm working on a display stand similar to the Spitfire stand. Just waiting for something to come from the US to do the uh, the top of the stand. And uh, when that's here, then I'll get that little video out. It won't be a big one. Look, I had a, a strange relationship with this build. I was really desperate to put some plastic together. I haven't put it together for a while. I've been doing all that other stuff. And this didn't satisfy that desire. So I was a little bit off it right from the get-go. But I sort of fell in love with it as the build, not so much the build, as the painting commenced. And it started to take on a personality. So, yeah, as I've said a few times, I'm not a, an aircraft modeler. And this is pretty ordinary in comparison to what the guys who have got some real talent can do. But I like it. It was um, ultimately came up. It was a fun project to do. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So I will leave you with a bit more spinning around on the magic wheel and some still photos as a close up. And then I'll come back with the normal goodbye. And I think the next video that will be out is probably back to the British Zulu Wars troops for the Rourke's Drift Diorama. So I am about to clear the deck and get stuck into those. Take care, guys. I will catch you in the next one.
So if you like this video, hit the thumbs up and share. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and ding the donger. And of course, leave a comment because I love reading them. Cheers.